sharing. And we're live. Hey, and we're talking sharing is caring. That's what we always say. And we are talking about social media day, so that's perfect. Social media. Social media. Sharing your posts to the one you love the most. Indeed. Uh, and easy ways to get that started and, and rolling forward and some little simple strategies around it because sometimes people have a hard time with it. I'm John Paduchak, johnpaduchak.com, and Targeted Net Solutions is my uh, agency. And with me today the, is... The infamous... Hey, okay, we can do that now. The yeah. infamous Dr. Christopher exactly. Vogelman of Maximize Your Media, our digital agency, and Life Beyond Practice, our group where we teach doctors how to build their own online businesses so they can finally escape the exam room. It's a beautiful. We're talking thing. social posting today, not post toasties or post raisin bran, but social posts. Social posts, exactly. What is a social post, and why should these business owners care? Yeah, well, there's a good reason for that. And when we commonly see most people's Facebook pages today, they look kind of empty, kind of desolate, a little deserted, like They're nobody's dead. really been posting there on a regular basis, and that's not a good thing, is it? No. In fact, when you research businesses, one of the things that we have found, a lot of them haven't posted since 2016 or 2015. There are tumbleweeds rolling through their Facebook page. I know. I got to say that um, most of what I see these days isn't so much not posted to at all as it is posted very infrequently, like every yeah. 15 days or something like that. And the question I think to ask is, if you were to go look at a business and you're looking at their social media and you only see posts every 15 days or not since 2016, what do you do? It kind of looks like maybe they're not really either taking their business seriously or they're out of business. And so that's why it's important. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't a good first impression. Yeah, because first impression. as we well know, for a couple of studies have talked about 70 to 73% of consumers when they do a search for a business, first they go to Google, they search your business or practice, look for that, and then they head to your website. Shortly after the website, they go straight to Facebook and check to see what your page looks like. And if you haven't been posting regularly, the thought that comes to mind of the average consumer or the average potential patient is, huh, if they're neglecting this page, which is supposed to be building community and their reputation, what other things may be slipping through the cracks in their business? Exactly. Yeah. And you know, we all, we all try to do the thing that's in our lane. So if we're a practicing doctor or dentist or whatever it might be, it's kind of hard to keep up with social media. It's not our thing, right? I mean, it's our well, thing, it's, but it's not your thing. Yeah, it's, it's our thing. <laughs> well, it has been my thing as well as running a practice. And I think sure. it's it's interesting because uh, doctors, I can speak for being a doc, doctors like to do doctoring. We're very good at it. We're good at bringing in patients, having consultations, examinations, prescribing treatment plans for medications if you're some of my allopathic MD friends or my dental friends, a treatment plan for taking care of doing whatever you might be doing, a full mouth restoration or just simple things like a root canal. And so, what we attempt to do as we're producing these types of social media services is to allow business owners to be able to do what they love to do and not have to worry about making their business page look like they're a million dollar business. It's a first impression. It's branding, really. So you want your branding to be consistent over everything, and it should be the same thing in social media. In particular, the branding that you do on your own posts. Is very important. I wonder if I can share what it looks like, too. Hey, you keep talking. You Let me see if I'll I can do this. I'll keep talking. I want to see if I can do the screen share from so one of cool. my pages. I'll keep, I'll keep talking. Talk so, away. So the idea behind it, you know, obviously, um, it, it can be kind of a challenge for some of us to keep up with our social posting, but it doesn't have to be difficult. Sometimes it's easy as finding different things on the same topic and setting them up using um, something like Buffer or whatever to post. Or you can hire somebody like us to help you with that. We do it as a service all the time, and we actually do it quite inexpensively. Hello there, Troy. Hello. I'm going to now start sharing here real quick. Are you sharing because you're caring? You are. Man, everybody's trying to share today. Hang on. 
Yes. I got my uh, page. Dr. V Here's started a, first. This is a good we'll see, except this is a good example of social sharing. So this is, I won't call it a dummy page, but what it is actually is an example of say a chiropractic office where ideally you would have the chiropractor, you know, a picture of you actually working on a patient. And then you have whatever your picture is in terms of your profile pic for the page. But the social sharing is what we're talking about down through here. Now here's a good example. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit further. Like, okay, here's a post on lacking energy. And so we take that post and we actually will create it. These are posts that are actually created by chiropractors, people who have the experience and do the research on chiropractic. And then we brand them according to whoever, whichever business there is. And the same thing is true of, um, of video posts too. So here's an example, you know, misalignments at birth. So you can see that this is a very active page and every day, April 26th, that every day there's another social post that's being made. And it's continuously branded both in light and dark versions of the logo of the practice. And the same thing is true if I can switch to a different social share. Let me see if I can go to a different screen. This is kind of fun. Kind uh, of fun. Share, I'm going to share another screen. I've never done this before, so this is pretty awesome, actually. It gives me the option of sharing a Chrome tab. And so I'm going to share this one. This one is Charleston, Charleston, South Carolina. So we've done this before where we've actually put a video together for the header for a page. And then they see the little logo over here on the left. And the same sort of thing is here, except these are vetted by dentists. And so you'll see we have the little logo in there. So the, the main thing about this is when you're dealing with things like flossing facts or two teeth or things like that, you have the, and somebody shares this they're sharing it with your branded logo and so not only does it make your your page look active you can see here's a little video go go video go but this is just an animated post that we do also this type of stuff john does these i do these it's kind of fun it's kind of, sort of a mainstay it's a it's a low cost way to have people look like they have a million dollar branding Okay, so I'm going to get I'm going to get out I'm going to get out of that, but that's a good example of what social social sharing is like. I could see people asking um, how you do those animated posts. Yeah, yes. well, we 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 create them, mm -hmm. and then I, I've actually done them in things like Keynote and other things to create them and change them into .m4v files, which can be easily uploaded. You can do MOV, MP4s, things like that. The mm -hmm. challenge is you also need to upload them into Facebook as videos. And we have we have ways of uploading these things. It's very time so we do them one at a time, but we have tactics and techniques which allow us to do it um, in batches for a particular business, but with their own branding. That's one of the things that we do. It's kind of fun actually, because you can, you can take somebody who's maybe only doing uh, $300,000 a year in their practice and it makes it look like they're doing 1.5 million based on the fact that they have such a high-end looking branding right now. Mm -hmm. so, so that's something that's, 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 that's a fun thing in marketing. And for us as digital marketers, it's, it, it's, it's not a big, it, it's one of these micro services that we use kind of to get our foot in the door. And then eventually uh, somebody may request something more from us. Maybe they want a website design or maybe they want to do live mm -hmm. video strategies or maybe sure. they want to create a live show that they do. But this is sort of one of those foot in the door services that we provide. And it's valuable. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. It is amazing how valuable it really is because the perception within your community is that, you know, you've taken it up several notches and you're pretty high end, so. I'm just trying to find something here for me that I want to share here with you guys. So one we of have the, the real estate ones, that's why I was, I was looking for the real estate ones. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of different ones that are pre-done yeah. uh, that we can that we can work with and share uh, with clients, which is great. And um, the next thing that we work on a lot is actually helping, as Dr. V said, with live streaming. So we'll help clients with their yeah. live stream. And I've got an example of that with one of my clients. We have a couple of friends of ours too who also do uh, live streaming Chamber of Commerce shows, which is a great way to showcase a local business sure. as well as the chamber itself. So one of the one of the things that I did with my friend Ken Stone, if I can find Ken's page here to show you guys. Oh, Ken, where are you? 
Everybody okay. must get stuff. Yeah. This is great. This is the first time we're doing this screen sharing. I love it. So, <laughs> this is kind of cool. So, I like you, it. Are you guys seeing this all right? Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. so, That's good. So uh, Ken is one of my clients, a good friend of mine. He's um, he's a spiritual teacher, and he does a weekly broadcast. So I worked with Ken on his weekly broadcast, and then every other week he does a workshop that's a video. And um, he does that on a weekly basis. I have other clients that I work with, too, that do this, um, and they'll do, that we'll set up live video strategy with them so that they can either do live snippets daily or sometimes quite a long session. So Ken does like an hour session once once or twice a week, and he's starting to do his um, his FAQs every couple of days in short form in snippets. So that's something new that we added, and he's going to be running regularly. Is he going to be putting those on Instagram too? Because that would be, work really well, I think, on Instagram. Yeah, it would work well. Um, yeah. We're kind of trying to figure out where Ken's audience resides in total. Like yeah. we know he's got a good, strong Facebook audience. He definitely yeah. has a YouTube audience. He, um, we just we just finished up his YouTube channel, and right. um, it's funny, you know, you go from YouTube, and then you go to um, live video, and the things that you used to do very statically to create on YouTube, you start to go, geez, I don't have to do that very statically. I can just do that on a regular basis and use use StreamYard and just create them on the fly. So mm -hmm. he's gone now from having, you know, sat down and actually did video after video. Uh, to now he does them live as uh, as it works into his schedule. And then you, you chop up the live into snippets, or he's deliberately doing separate snippets? He's deliberately doing separate snippets as he goes okay. That makes sense, yeah, because yeah. then you have your, your intro, your meet, and then the outro. Exactly. Um, another thing that I've seen actually um, somebody do with their um, their podcast, and he's, uh, it's he was doing it with somebody else. His name is Eric Sue, and it's, it's S-I-U. Mm -hmm. um, but they were with his partner that they do their, their podcast. It's kind of funny. So I don't know what really to call. So when you people, some call them, call them podcasts, but when you film yourself yeah. doing actually the audio that, that actually becomes an, a podcast, which is just audio anyway. Yeah, well, it, it, it is, it is considered it, I call a like podcast a video only because podcast, they're stripping. But, yeah. They're just stripping it out. It's a, it's the same sort of thing when they used to do things like Larry King live and that sort of thing where you'd only hear my radio and then suddenly they were broadcasting it through CNN. So you could actually watch them doing the radio interviews. Right? Yeah. I just, yeah. I'm just saying just mentally for me, I'm like, well, the podcast is the audio thing. And you just say here, yeah. we're doing, we're doing our podcast. I'm like, well, no, you're, I guess you are doing it, but you're actually filming video you're, anyway. You're, yeah, yeah. It's behind <laughs> the scenes. Were, it's basically yeah. one of those behind the scenes things. They were filming. I'm using my just, hands now. So they were filming or, or doing the audio for them back to back. And yeah. it's interesting because they were and, and that's something that you can do for like even your live snippets. So if you want to just tackle a whole bunch all at once mm -hmm. and they were just filming straight, but mm -hmm. but they were doing they're adding the the front end to it. You know, this is episode, blah blah blah. They go through their stuff and then end yeah. it and then this is episode. And so then you just go in and you, when you're editing and you just cut them out. And, and so that's something that draw an outro to the podcast. And yeah. then um, it's just really, a, you know, when we're talking about um, distribution channels, it's really a, a form of syndication. So yeah. we're taking the, we're taking the video, we're stripping out the audio and just putting it out as another syndication as a podcast. Yeah. Well, I think in a lot of, some people actually do start, this is what I'm doing. I'm about to release a podcast and, uh, I've got like 10 episodes that just have the general outlines. I may just do five points or so that I'm going to cover. And my intention is just initially just to release those 10 episodes, actually probably eight to 10, without any sort of me doing it live on, on YouTube or anything else like that, just because I want a little more control for the first couple of episodes. But I'm trying to keep them darn short, like under 10 minutes. I want bite-sized pieces. And I think that uh, eventually as there's some traction in the podcast, I may go into what you're talking, which is to do live broadcasting or a recording of, it doesn't actually even have to be live, but live is probably best of all if you can do it. It's just mm -hmm. a question of, does a listener in the future enjoy hearing your ums and uhs and things like that? I don't know. Some editing may be necessary to make a podcast sound really good. Maybe That's some. the same. At the same time, I noticed that even with my own live videos that I that I do, a lot of my ums and ahs become less and less as I actually mentally yeah. work on it. And yeah. then I think you'll just have your normal 
you know, cadence and manner. And I think it's fine for there's, yeah. there's certain acceptable ums and ahs when people can tell that you're thinking out something and it still flows good. But if it's a, uh, like what should we be recording? If it sounds like your brain, if it sounds like your brain is flatlining, it's probably yeah, not good. Exactly. <laughs> Very so, good. yeah, and actually, you know, that's interesting that you bring it up since, I mean, today we are talking about, um, you know, social media social posting postings, for business. Yeah. I mean, yeah, social media to me it, it, as well is podcasting. I mean, it's another media form that's social. And that's one thing that actually I, I have been thinking about the past day or so about taking and doing the videos or really just doing the videos and then converting them into the audio, just taking the audio format and making that into a podcast. Because the reality is when I'm looking at like, like, so what I did when I first came in here, we're talking about the distribution of this social media, right? Mm -hmm. So I yeah. then came into here uh, today and I took the the link to it, forwarded it onto my personal profile. Mm -hmm. So my people can see it. And then I did the same thing too with a new group that I actually joined. Uh, it's called 99 days and they're, doing strictly doing video. Well, actually I shouldn't say strictly video. It's you're, they're basically doing something for 99 days with an emphasis on doing live videos. That's pretty cool. I like, it's better than 99 problem. Yes. 99 yeah. days of cre content creation. <laughs> <laughs> and so again, that was another channel that, you know, we have added onto this, onto this live stream. Yeah. And I really think that is really important. It's, uh, that's also why live event marketers, why I created that is, is it gives people another channel and then mine is specifically themed towards mm -hmm. business and marketing right. that, you know, uh, so it's not just somebody, I mean, that's what the draw part of the draw is. It's that it's live stuff and then it's, it's business and marketing related. Um, but you want to find as many of those avenues or channels or distribution channels or places you can syndicate your content for your business. And like I say, well, yeah, and, that was, and this, yeah. And the social content, the, the social aspects are really important because it's responding to comments and getting people to like and to love and do all those other things. I mean, social media, media really implies that there's going to be some level of back and forth communication. But some people just put content out there. And even when people make comments, they won't respond to the comments. And, you know, for art, for people who are small business owners, what we do is we may help them create the content and post it, but it's the small business owner's responsibility or to assign a staff member or someone to respond to the comments because otherwise it's way too much work for us to manage somebody's social oh, yeah. media pages. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I was just gonna say Martina was saying that uh, this is great. I just invited three people to interview. So thanks for ah, mentioning Perfect. This. Awesome. It's a great strategy, you. Martina, you know, to be able to invite people and it makes great yeah. regular content because it's not just you and it's yeah. not like you're getting content from other places. So it's it's actually nice original stuff. Well, I think our, our conversational approach has been really good for me. I just feel like I'm at a cocktail party or we're just getting together yeah. and shooting the breeze in the backyard. And I think that is so natural that it becomes appealing in and of itself because it's not scripted. It's not rehearsed. It's just an actual back and forth. And so amongst the three of us, it's very social right now. And it's just a question of then reaching out to other people through the comments and the shares and responding to their questions. Well, let me ask you then a question of individuals. Mm -hmm. So if you're just a, say a solopreneur, mm -hmm. what do you do? Because I do agree with you. It is a lot easier when you have somebody else to kind of bounce some things off of and, and even, you know, you have a topic mm -hmm. and then you take your expertise and you just kind of break that down for people in your, in your social, in your social media. But what do you do if you're I an individual? Yeah, I just like having a card of some sort, not, not a script because the script is going to make you look so artificial and Disinterested. I, I think there's a couple ways to yeah, start. Put, put that <laughs> if, if you're an individual, I think there's a couple ways to start. Like you can see what we did with sh with screen sharing. Yeah, it's really, screen sharing is really great. easy to screen yeah. share your screen, and then it does show yep. a small video of you, so people get used to seeing mm -hmm. you. And you know, if I were to hop over and I'll grab Doctor V's screen, you know, you, you, you grabbed my screen. You, you still get this. <laughs> yeah, I could have grabbed mine too. Either way, 
but <laughs> but you get to see us in in the in the presentation which i think is important so it's it's um you know this is kind of a more classic way of presenting on your own to do something it's like really that very interesting yeah, yeah and like so can i share another screen That's the yeah question. you can share another screen if you want like chrome tab but the um the other way to get started is as troy mentioned a couple of days ago just sharing short snippets so yeah. sharing sharing short snippets is great because you know it's just a couple of minutes and it's if you get the talk all bulleted out in fact you could even show a slide and do what we're doing screen sharing with your yeah. image on the side and just kind of walk through the bullets like you would a small presentation of and then those who haven't are or weren't here the other day that did shame on you first off just kidding uh but they shame on you. Doesn't know, for, for <laughs> shame that, that doesn't know what a what a live snippet is it's basically where you take yeah. a particular topic that you know it could be quite elaborate or long but you just take a particular topic that you kind of want to break down for somebody and it could be anywhere for me it can be you know it could be even a 60 second depends on how succinct mm -hmm. you can be with it but it could be yeah. i would say three five you know ten minutes long but yeah just even a a good three to five minute live snippet of a video or excuse me of a of a theme or topic that you know about and that you're it's your it's in your wheelhouse right. where you give people some value yeah, they're so they're so easy to do, and and the thing about them is you can take a large topic and break it down into a whole bunch of small ones, and once you start doing a few of those, you do start feeling a lot more comfortable. And one of you mentioned, um, it was on another stream that we did, mm -hmm. where even just like like you had just shown, so you'd have the, your your screen or a slide, mm -hmm. right. and putting yourself in the corner, mm -hmm. gets yeah. you like sort of seeing yourself, so you're not so nervous of. Just having your big head, it's not just you, then your face, yeah. you know, on the well, screen. and I do, yeah, I like, I like that teeny tiny. Actually, in this case, it would be a little here. <laughs> when you just little have your little bit of a through there, yes. or down below, or wherever it is, you don't. It, it's a great way to feel far less self-conscious when you're doing yes. live. Yeah, much, much easier to do, and you know, the short snippet talks too are usually something like, you know, three, three points about exercise or five points about jogging or you know whatever it might be it's or, just a very succinct couple of points yeah and you you, you can, can label it whatever. Yeah. yeah label it whatever you want it could be uh that kind of today's a best best business bet like bite-sized yeah. business bets you know and just make them tiny top so. 10 coffee machines top the top 10 coffee machines i don't know it's just and show all 10 of them in your house yeah you know stuff like that um recipes you know top five recipes that use x yeah what are the top those what are the top things. five recipes that you can make with these three ingredients yeah and the thing about them, jets, so. yeah and, and they can actually even be to where you take that those items you say what they are and then it can be it because i could see somebody saying well then wouldn't you have to go into more detail not necessarily that, that's that's all determined uh, uh, by you on how how deep you want to go into them for that that short snippet of a sure. video. Well, and that's that actually happening. I was going to say, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, say something. Like, yeah, we talking okay. about we're talking about you know there's live, but also with social media it isn't always necessarily live. So you doing a video, no. you know what I mean? Um, you can, you know, do other little fancy things or whatever you want. But if you really want to kick stuff out, live is really the best way to do it. And I was going to say, even if you're a solo practitioner, it doesn't necessarily mean you can't have a guest. So I was waiting for I was waiting for you that because I was like, it's it's kind of obvious, it's right? Come up. Like, it's very obvious. So yeah. I, and I, and I always, you know, I do that thirty day that thirty day video challenge, Troy. And over the years, oh my gosh, that's a tongue twister today. Over the years, I mean, that's really been the key to getting people to start broadcasting is find a buddy to broadcast with. And do it yeah. together because it is easier and some of us aren't very good solo speakers and um it's tough for us to kind of stay on track but if you have somebody to kind of parlay with and work with uh in doing a video presentation it does make it much much easier and they don't have to be super long even if you're doing something with a friend it can be like a five minute quick tip session or 10 minutes i wouldn't probably make it any longer than that we tend to, you know, do some pretty long broadcasts over here, but yeah. uh, <laughs> that's not really the norm for a lot of people. 
And sometimes it's a little much because even even uh, a lot of times we go through a lot of good points, but it is a lot to go. It is a lot to sort through for somebody who just wants to pop in and get some quick information. I was going to try to show you something. It, when you talk about bite-sized contents and teeny tiny pieces, mm -hmm. let me see if I can find this. Um, I used to do a lot of software demos, you know, mm -hmm. like five, four or five minute quick demonstrations of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's the one. Here's the one I was thinking of. So my wife has a, a blog called Mommy's Kitchen, and this is Conchas, Mexican mm -hmm. sweetbreads. So there's a picture. She social shares. It gets tons of people talking about it. But the video, these are 60-second videos. Mm -hmm. And these things, she posts them to YouTube, and they get incredible engagement. And all it is, it's one of those things where you just go ahead, you show all the ingredients step by step what it is. But she's not really describing anything in there. And there's always, you know, to learn more or to understand more or to get more information about how to do it, turn over to the blog and look for that. And so these 60 second videos, by and large, 60 seconds, sometimes, you know, maybe a minute 10, mm -hmm. they're pretty, they're pretty good. I mean, they, they, work, really they, they work well for social engagement. I will tell you that. Oh, sure. I, I, I totally watch those videos like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 the called actual... the, they're called tasty, tasty videos is what they're called. Okay. Well, and they get your interest to do more yeah. with it. You know, we've been where uh, Ken and I have been working on these short 60 minute spots. 60 uh, minutes or 60, 60 seconds. seconds. No, guys, they're it's short. short. It's short. Instead of 60 yeah, yeah. hours, they're 60 it's minutes. Short <laughs> one minute spots because his sessions are really quite long. They usually yeah. are over an hour. Exactly. And so these very short sessions um, work really well. Yeah, no, I like that, Martina. So, Martina said, favorite quotes, top 10 books, little known facts. Yeah, any of those things make great. Yeah, those are absolutely great ideas. Perfect. Yep. And, and, and you could do so many different ones from just those few ideas that were sh that yeah. she shared right there. Yeah, and I mean, the other thing too is look at what we're doing here. We've got people making comments. Thank you for that, Martina. You've been perfect for that. How easy is it to speak to this? Yeah, hey, let's talk about favorite quotes. You know, that's one of the things that's very commonly used when people first start with social media. They right. start out with quotes, right? Mm -hmm. So, yep. you know, there's a lot we can talk about just with what, what Martina said. But oftentimes you're going to have viewers they're going to ask you questions. If you use something like StreamYard, it's easy to bring up their question and speak to it. So it gives you even more to talk about. So let me show you uh, what I, I did yesterday. So I'm, I get to share my screen too. Mm -hmm. Let's see how, let's see. Oh, it's the, it's the first time I've ever done screen sharing is today. We're really doing this on the fly without a net. That's all right. So. <laughs> it's half the fun. It is half the fun. This is, this What's, is the other half? What's, what's the other half? I don't know. All right. <laughs> okay. Sure. There you Our go. Faces go shoot over to one side. Okay. So this this one I did uh, yesterday with um, with Raxo Calderon. He's doing a he's actually doing ten minute videos that he did with a whole bunch of experts on mm -hmm. a local business uh, techniques that they that businesses can use nowadays during the epidemic to you know make more money. And what we did with this was it was a straight up interview kind of thing with a who what when why how cool. where you know um yeah. and that's when I mean, we did that just yesterday and he's he's part yeah. of like my marketers group and i said hey let's get some more eyeballs for people because it's launching i think it's on uh it's may 1st mm -hmm. yeah and uh we, that's that that's what became our video was a hey what is this that you're doing you know yeah. what is it about who you know who's involved in it what can people learn about it and it was, you know, basically a, a, a live snippet because we did it live. I mean, interviews are great. That takes the picture off you, too. Your guest yeah. is going to do most of the talking. A good portion of it, anyways. You have to, you have to well, still yeah, ask. Yeah, you have to good sometimes question. prompt them to start. <laughs> well, no, and I, I found that, you know, the best interviewers tend to speak the least during the interview. Yes. Yeah, they do. They yeah, you, you, will, you will find people that even though they are the expert in the area, can be nervous mm -hmm. at answering or so either being self-conscious or, yeah, you can get the, you, you get me on there and I'm going to be the, the yap, yippity yap guy for, <laughs> for anybody like, can I get in a word in edgewise? But at the same time, uh, I have found that with some people, you do have to be able to step in a tad bit and at yeah. least kind of smooth out the edges or whatever. Yeah. 
reel them in. So, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they interview. They sometimes the viewers won't be happy if you're too yappy. So. No, you have to be. You yeah. have to be a good moderator for sure. Yeah, I have to reel you guys in every once in a while. Just it's real. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, there's there's really plenty of things to talk about. Um, one of the one of the things we commonly get people working on is uh, facts about their business, um, things that people would like to know about you, things that maybe people don't know about you. Um, what are some of the other things that we go through? And to bring, to bring them towards the front, because you can yeah. actually create posts that are, you know, if you go to an about section, either on a Facebook page, very few people click through that. So I think sometimes it's important to bring up those facts, bring a little bit of the personality of the business mm -hmm. owner into a post. And I've done that for clients with pictures of them at a barbecue or pictures of them on a boat or just enjoying themselves, playing with, for example, with one of my clients, he has a lot of pediatric patients. And as a result, taking a few pictures of them at Halloween and different times like that to show the kind of rapport that he has with kids. Right. And those are a little more personal and you're not gonna find them by drilling down to an about section, which is all text. And, and lots of times, warm fuzzies. I was gonna say two things that uh, establish your uniqueness or mm -hmm. uh, that make you different from other people in this the practice, the same craft, mm -hmm. the same career. Um, yeah work in the same business as you do? Yeah, why your auto body shop versus Joe yeah. Fontana's down the street, right. that type of thing. Why do you want me as your heart surgeon versus, like, you know? <laughs> my heart, your heart surgeon. I do not want you as my heart surgeon, no. <laughs> just let you know. I'm shopping for a heart surgeon. If you, right. if you, can, if you can cut this was, on the back side of this matchbook, you too can become a heart surgeon. Oh, yeah. Another thing that I see that uh, we as marketers kind of get caught up in is always thinking of, and I, I agree with it, but there's also another side to it, just like a coin. So on one side, we're always talking about, well, what's the unique thing that makes you stand out? Yeah. And then what are on the other side of the coin is what are the things that you have forgotten or that you take for granted all the time that you don't tell people about? Oh, that's true. Because they forget that new people coming into say, you know, a practice or into a business they're kind of at the beginning level of that and they, right. they need, they, they need to know that beginning stuff again. Yeah. And since their expertise, they're, they're up here as far as, you know, doctor or the, the auto body shop and you need to come back down here just because you deal with the carburetor all day long and you start throwing out words, or whatever. I'm like, Hey, look, all I know is the thing is smoking. The thing is smoking. You know what the I mean? joint is jumping. The thing it's is smoking. Good. Well, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and they start throwing out lingo and I'm like, Mm, you know, I can put some oil in my car. What? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so. What I'm saying is that it, when when you talk above people, yeah, right. Then there's they're they're not feeling connected to you. Um, and I find that too. Again, with marketing, I've been doing it for so long that I have to. Mm -hmm. I have to kind of. It's and some people will call it dumb it down, but I just have to remember that they're not necessarily where I'm coming from. A really good example is my brother, who is a who's a programmer. Well, I used to program as well. And, uh, and I still do a little bit here and there, but I remember one distinct time, my wife and I were going out to eat with my, you know, my brother come along. He wasn't married at the time. And so we're sitting down having me at a Mexican restaurant. So uh, I just thought you might like that. Dr. B. Um, I always love a good, a good Mexican. restaurant. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and so, he, and, you know, we were just talking and, you know, what's going on, what are things doing? And he starts talking about a project that he's doing. And he's all up here with describing things. And I mm -hmm. immediately see my wife's eyes glaze over. Yeah. Which is the normal reaction <laughs> for people. You know what I mean? When you're talking, wait, the you know, uh, okay. But, you know, she's being nice and trying to listen to everything like that. And so I'm already immediately kind of being that middleman, right? Where I knew I had to go while well, he's talking. I'm, I'm sorry. The, tra so what the translator. Yeah, the, the translator. translator the US. What he's saying is, and she's like, oh, okay. You know, and, and, and it's interesting too, because I can, I, I know that I've fallen into this as well, that my brother has, didn't even catch on that I'm having to translate. He's so in his zone that, you know, of this awesome thing that he's involved in all the time. And so that's what we need to remember on the other side of the coin is that people, while we want to be unique, 
we also remember the other side of the coin is that people don't always come into where our, at our level or where we're at when we're explaining our services, our products, those kind of things. And, I think and so they, the, they can sometimes, you can sometimes then, you know, people just will end up walking away from you because they don't feel a connection. They're just like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. they don't connect. Well, the uniqueness, the uniqueness really is your branding because if, especially you don't want to become a commodity like everybody else. But I think what you're talking yes, about really relates to part of the branding, which is to have very well-trained staff. Because if you still aren't really good at communicating this with people, but you're an amazing surgeon or auto body mechanic, you can still have staff people who are capable of educating the consumer very well, very nicely, and without being condescending. But then that's part of your branding. The branding starts the first time somebody answers the phone. That's part of your business branding. Wow, I like this idea. So Martina, Martina, you've been great today. Thank you so much for sharing. She's active. Yeah, I love this. Yes, thank so, you, Martina. So she says, my intention is to interview locals, and they're going to showcase what they offer. One is going to take me through a session of her coaching. They will have 10 minutes. I also like this open conversation. You know, one of the things that I've been doing, Martina, which I think is kind of cool, is um, I've started to take clients that I've worked with and go through their case. I ask them if they'll come on video with me, and we can talk and share their case studies, which is really cool because that way I can take them through something that I started with them all the way up to where they are now. And it's so cool to actually go through that because I, you know, you kind of watch them at the beginning stages and you can see in their eyes and in their faces that, wow, you know, this was kind of hard when I first started, but I am so darn excited about where I am now. And they just like light up. It was, it's been some of the best work that I've done on live video and uh, can't wait to share it. And it's going to be great. Yeah, it's, the aha, it's the aha moment. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's, I want to run with that. I want to yeah. run with that case study. Let me tell you, case studies are a billion times better than a testimonial. Yeah. Because what happens is when you share a case study with someone else, they have more opportunities to really see themselves in that person's shoes and relate to it. Where, where a testimonial is just more like a, you know, yeah, I worked with, with John and he helped me build my business 10 X, you know, something like, okay. I mean, it's so boring. Yeah. Why so? Why so low? Why only ten x? Hundred x. Hundred x. Because. Or, be, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Let's see. I have a billion. Excellent. <laughs> I have a billion dollars, and gee, you wouldn't want ten x, right? You have to have a hundred x for that, right? Gosh. All right. But the other thing, it, it really, it really does. It allows people when you when you hear a case study, it's you see them and their growth, and that's what people want to see is progression. Yeah. With whatever, like whether you know your it's your service or your product, they want to see that they're going to progress, become more at the end, or through the process that they you know. And I, I I'm all for case study stuff. I love it. It's the you end result. What, I went from point A to point B. Yeah. You know what's been fun is we've been doing the case studies, and I think it's I think it's been really cool. So as I go through and I'm learning about these people's businesses and going through and doing their case study and working with them. I'm also able to like turn around and do the same thing for them that they did for me, which is really, really neat. And some of them have got some great insight that they just wouldn't have gotten any, any other way. So I'm coming in from scratch, never seen them before, never did anything with them before. And then they're, they're like, wow, I never really looked at what I did that way. Or I never heard myself saying these things. Um, and, they would never have come across those things if we hadn't gone through and done the case studies. So we actually turned around and I did. Um, so I've done them for my client and they've done them for me. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, fresh I, eyes I for stay. gals and guys. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a neat opportunity. And most people, you know, fresh eyes, you see different things than. Yeah. I can't say enough. I'm, I'm, I'm a lover of, of uh, case studies. Yeah. Even if they're only 10 X case studies. <laughs> But that's a great way to get or, somebody. Or two X. Two X is okay too. <laughs> Troy took yeah. me from one million to two million dollars. <laughs> one X. Yeah, no. I don't think no. The two X is two good. X. Yeah. One X. Yeah. I I put a dollar in and get a dollar back. I take that any day of the year. It's a dollar. Good. You're never going to make profit. <laughs> I know that's what everybody thinks, but I don't know. One well, you will expand your reach. You'll expand your reach. <laughs> So yeah, so that's just one thing that I've done um, that I find works really, really, really well. Or like we said, just the standard interviews of people. Um, 
we actually even went through and did uh, origin stories with each other, you know, so we would cross interview each other to do origin stories and that kind of stuff. And that stuff is great on your Facebook page. People will, will come all day long to listen to that or a YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, I and also, and Sorry. Go ahead. I, I did an origin story with uh, Brian Voyles, copywriter in the mastering copy group that I have on Facebook. Uh, and that was, that's really neat. Um, I think, especially with somebody that you're building a relationship with, um, so there I am with the um, cause I'm like, where do I want to go with this? That's but it, that, that, what I did with him is, is he's, he's the one that started the group with me. And I thought that, oh, well, there's a lot of people that knew him already that were in the group, but a lot of people that didn't know him. And it just kind of popped into my head, Hey, origin story. And it's really, it's really neat. And it allows you to build a, a connection with somebody that you actually even know, unless you know them like super, super, super well, it's kind of like the case study thing you were saying, where there's things that you, you know, that come out that, that you didn't know, or they didn't remember and that kind of thing. So that's actually another good idea. It's an origin story. Yeah. I did a, um, a podcast with one of my friends and he wanted to start out with just kind of going through my story. And I actually posted it on my Facebook page because it was so good. And my friend's a documentary filmmaker. So, I mean, how much better interview can you get than that? I mean, he's a fantastic interview. So it's just worked out super. You just never know what's going to come out of it. I want to circle back to social posting. Yes. So that's sort of what we started out with. And I think people need to understand that there are certain places other than just Facebook, um, Twitter perhaps mm -hmm. is a good place for it. But Instagram should never be underestimated, and in particular, the Instagram stories, because the Instagram stories may only have a 24-hour lifespan, but they can become highlights in your social sharing under your profile. And you also have IGTV. So Instagram television is a place that I often go to to hear a lot from some marketers and personal development people and others who I follow on a regular basis and gain a lot of insights and information from. So like Gary Vee is a good example who does these short snippets and that, but they lead into perhaps a 20 minute IGTV. Mm -hmm. And, and of course everything is in a, it is in a vertical format on IGTV. So you have to consider that when you're repurposing your content. Right. But I, I'm a big fan of IGTV in terms of social sharing. Also LinkedIn is one that's overlooked as well. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, it's that's really, business professional oriented and they are also working on their their live streaming platform that as we i know we talked about on a on a in a different yeah. area uh, i can't remember the application we were, we're trying to all apply for ig we're trying to get accepted you know, yeah. linkedin linkedin and something beta and, and there's and a few big hitters a lot of people it. that um, get it for the big cheese right now i know a lot of people who got accepted and they don't even know how they got accepted and then we know other right. people we know other people like uh, like I, I was just talking to my friend Ken the other day, and he's friends with Vivica von Rosen, and Vivica does all these all these trainings for LinkedIn and everything. And she said I couldn't even get accepted. She said I had to get the people from LinkedIn Learning to go over to LinkedIn and say, "What's up? What get Vivica in?" <laughs> so it, it just goes to show you it's very very hard to get in uh, to that, but. But that being said, there's still plenty of room to take lives that you did other places and put them in your profile, add them so that people get to know you better. Absolutely, absolutely that's true. Huge and so, because they'll allow yeah, you and, to post. And the same types of business, if you're especially if you're in B2B, those business posts that you create for your Facebook page as a solopreneur or consultant, they work very well when you're uh, repurposing them to go onto LinkedIn. Very, very well. Well, you know, I never know who's going to come visit and see me over here. Uh -oh. and who's coming to visit? My friend, Victoria Hickman. Victoria. Hey, Victoria. Victoria. Nice Hello. Oh, she said, oh, sorry. She was saying, hey, John, and I waved, and I was – I. Oh. Uh, that might have been yeah, bad etiquette yeah. or something like that. I don't know. Nice to see you. Victoria. Oh, wow. Troy. Troy, Victoria. <laughs> Dr. V. Hello, Victoria. <laughs> so – yeah, so that, that's the thing. I, you know, I, I'm curious what they're going to do with LinkedIn, but I, I don't see why it's not going to be open in a sense. It will eventually. Yeah, it'll open, up, it'll open up eventually. And I think that the key is if you want to get accepted over there, they do ask you where else are you streaming, what other things mm -hmm. can I see. 
Show me uh, examples. Yeah. So show them examples and make sure you do examples on Facebook and YouTube and well, other places and, and where they can evaluate. The thing that's intriguing about LinkedIn to me too is that we've seen the advent over the last, I think it's like 18, 24 months or so, of likes, claps, hearts, and other things that are just below those posts. Mm -hmm. Because you before you never could rate those and now you have all those little emojis or yeah, icons yeah. that you would see in places like emoticons yeah yes emoticons but the clapping there's the clapping the likes the hearts that we've seen before you just don't get all the faces that you could get say on facebook i even learned how to make memojis the other day i saw your oh. emoji <laughs> you had a beer i think you should have a memoji with a mimosa i know i had one with my head blown you got the one with your head. But there were two up. of them. They were both going. They were going to the middle. They I know that was kind of cool, huh? I know. I, it was your split personality drinking different beverages. Good, you know, the um, <laughs> so we brought in a, another uh, social media platform, uh, meaning we brought in LinkedIn just now. I, I think there are some other smaller ones that. I mean, again, I can't name any off the top of my head, but I've. I know there's some other ones that that you know, yeah. oh, I'm laughing. You know, well, no, I, I post to Tumblr all the time and people say Tumblr, that's dead. No, I actually oh. get Tumblr juice. So oh, sure. Sure. No, Tumblr. <laughs> which Tumblr is, is which is amazing. I thought they were completely dead. And suddenly I see that on Instagram when I'm sharing. I have the option for Tumblr and Twitter and those types of places. And Twitter, I've gotten some great conversations going back and forth with social media gurus or mentors and we're just going back and forth for days or weeks at a time until we become friends on facebook or we're following each other on instagram or things like that so there's something each platform has its own value and if you can take material from your small business and distribute as troy say get just distribution network going you don't have to be all places all the time but if you can just add a little bit here or there, yeah, you gotta understand too, Google monitors about 15% of Twitter traffic coming through. Mm -hmm. So even though little Google spiders are still pulling a little bit from Twitter, so it wouldn't hurt to be there, particularly if you're in the B2B world. It has been interesting posting to all the different platforms from here. Well, yeah, because you're live streaming multi-streaming. Multi yeah, we're, we're live streaming right now to two Facebook pages, YouTube, Periscope, and, um, Twitch. Twitch, thank you. Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Do you Twitch. use hashtags on Twitch? Do hashtags uh, work? We haven't really been doing hashtags, yeah. have we? I don't know. Because we could have business advice, business coaching, sure. B2B. I, it been, would be interesting to see. I know that hashtags do nothing for you on Facebook, which is why if I post something from Instagram and send it to Facebook, those little hashtags may actually decrease my reach. Yeah, it's been which interesting is why, to see yeah. new watches on the different platforms. Yeah. So I haven't seen too many people picking it up on Twitter. Um, yeah. We've had a couple of people watch on Twitch. Uh, most mm -hmm. of our traffic has come from where I expected YouTube and Facebook. But mm -hmm. unless you start broadcasting in those places, you won't develop an audience. So. Right. But, you know, that brings and, up a point um, yeah. as far as, you know, broadcasting in those places, whatever, you know, those places yeah. are. I have been surprised that so in so in my group, I'm always telling people, hey, when you go, if if you're, because some people don't have a set time of going live, and that's okay, that's mm -hmm. fine, that's understandable, but when you go live quickly, like kind of like you know we all did in the beginning, like even when I came on, I'm like, hold on, let me go and throw these in these different places to let people know that we're going live, and that I'm on, and mm -hmm. I say, well, do the same thing, get your link, throw it in live event marketers to let people know you're live, yeah, and there are so many people that are just like they just don't do it. And I'm like, uh, okay, so the group has 400 and I think it's 60 something people now in just oh, in just uh, a month's time. Mm -hmm. And they won't do it. And to me, again, as a as an entrepreneur, let's say if I, I ran a grocery store or whatever, that'd be like saying, okay, well, we have an almost, we'll just say an infinite amount of flyers, but only pass them to the few houses just to like around, you know, just around the store don't go out a little bit farther from the store or whatever. I'm like, if you have a place that you can, especially repurpose your material mm -hmm. and it only takes but a moment to do it. Right, why not? It just, 
maybe it's just the way I think or whatever, but I'm like, I don't understand how people don't do it or won't do it. Um, and heck, if you have to hire somebody that you fire them off one thing and then they just go out and do it, you know, I mean, I don't know. It just kind of blows my mind how people need to understand the important and the importance of reach because you like Dr. V was saying, you don't know where Tumblr, what you're going to get from that. And mm -hmm. if it takes, you know, a moment to do some of these things, uh, might be Why tumble wouldn't in. you do it? Uh, tumble in. Yeah, my my <laughs> teeny tiny my teeny tiny TikTok experiment seems to be helping a little bit, but you have to have you got to have the right traction and the right hashtags to make TikTok. Are work. you dancing so, on on TikTok? I am not dancing on TikTok. I only <laughs> dance in the kitchen late at night with my wife. So That's no perfect. line dancing, by the way. So <laughs> the real cowboys like to touch women. <laughs> I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to touch that. Don't touch me. Yeah, because I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I, I was, I just don't touch that was, me. That was almost a random. You know. I, I used to take country and western dancing long, long ago in the early 90s because my staff wanted to get me out of the office. I was there sometimes till 9 30, 10 at night, really worried about me. And so all the lessons started at 7 25 each evening. So I had to be out the door with the boots and the whole thing. I still have two boots and done shirts, which is hysterical. I should wear one of those sometime. They so, fit right in. Yeah, I would fit we right in. We should get yeah, the flames out. coming up. They, they were doing line dancing on Zoom. The line dancing. Yeah, my sister did do line dancing on line Zoom. Dancing. That was pretty funny. Yeah, on because they could no longer gather up in Syracuse. They had to right. have so the instructor. On Zoom, which I thought was pretty pretty creative. It was actually, it was not bad at all. It was one way of keeping mm -hmm. people connected until they eventually can get back live to those lessons. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to get Conan O'Brien onto one of our lives. <laughs> he seems to like those. I can put out. I can put out some Harvard bait for him if you want to do that. That's pretty funny. Let's see if he bites, so <laughs> crimson. Oh my gosh! Go crimson. He's been hysterical. <laughs> I, it's been it's been fun to watch the different things that people have done in the live video, and of course that and everything's become video has become so much more social. The two are so intertwined now that. Um, well, yeah, but when we do social posting, we're really not doing much on video. We're doing animated videos. I think yeah, if animated. we could take people's content and change them into social posts, the challenge is that's very labor intensive. And yeah. we actually prefer to do stills or existing video, I'll call them not videos, they're animated. Yeah. Posts. So combining, animated posts are a lot easier. Yeah, yeah combining so combining video format. Live content is perfect. Yeah. Martina and, said she got uh, sucked into TikTok and had to leave. Oh. Yeah, it's t it's tough, but it's interesting because at first they show you sort of random stuff, but as you choose to follow people, then it becomes better. And I'll tell you, I got Gary V, Brennan Burchard, others. They're on TikTok, and eventually their algorithm sorts through everything and narrows it into what your interests are. So I, I don't touched. get any of those crazy tween teen videos. Okay, or things that's what I was gonna say. Like I haven't touched it because I've heard a lot of that. That just there's some interesting stuff on there. Do they? Yeah. So is that, is that all? Is that all mobile only? Like you can't do anything from the desktop into TikTok? You actually can do things from the desktop. The challenge is you can create videos, and then you have to send them to your mobile phone with a specific app, and that can actually transfer it to TikTok. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that is possible because like, I've been Instagram, playing with that one. Their yeah. Instagram is really wanting you to. It's it's mobile. We, in fact, they were talking about it in, in a the eCam Live group yeah. about people wanting to basically use their computers to stream into well, that. You, you but, can, you can through the through Creator Studio, Creative Studio in Facebook now. I've seen that. I, I asked my wife about it. Said, Do you realize you can post from Creator Studio in Facebook on your laptop into Instagram? And she says, "Oh yeah, I've known that for quite some time." Okay, because there was <laughs> there was a lot of talk of saying how that kind of violates or could violate their terms of service. So you could not if account. not if Facebook owns Instagram. I hey, but, you're, I, but you're going through yeah, the native app. That's the that's thing. That's interesting. How okay, you're going through Creator Studio. So if you're going through Creator Studio and Facebook is offering, would you like to send something to our other property? They're not going to slam you for doing it because they're the ones who are encouraging you to do it. They are. I, fact, would, I would I would agree. Interesting. I know yeah. a lot of people now that post all their photos on Instagram and then they get back posted to, to uh, Facebook. Yep. Yep. 
and that's how. So that and and, and, and the same stuff. thing with and WhatsApp is changing too. So you're going to get things into Facebook stories, yeah. Instagram stories. I think you're going to see more and more integration. And the so the, the other thing about social posting is you would hope that your social posts would encourage people to contact you through Facebook Messenger, for example, when we're talking about Facebook, and that you can start a conversation. And that's where we get into creating chatbots, for example. But the entree into your world is really that type of social posting that encourages engagement. Mm -hmm. For sure. So uh, we're getting close to the top of the hour. So I was going to say, if anybody has any last questions that you want to ask us, please comment down there, over there. <laughs> and if and if we don't know the answer, we probably know someone and, who does. And let us and let us know uh, if there's any if there's any last questions you have for us. But um, why don't we go into like final thoughts? I'll start with you, Troy. If you want, what final thoughts do you have on social posting that you'd like to share? You know, it's it's definitely an interesting thing that you need to get used to in, in regards to doing on a consistent basis. Um, a, a lot of people just, I don't know, you know people, have, I, I, I dabbled in it initially, you know, you'd post a little thing or two and a lot of my stuff wasn't necessarily social, but it's just become a large way to reach people. And it's, it's really sewn into people's lives, so to speak, you know, let me check what's on Facebook or what's been said on Twitter or Instagram or, you know, whatever, so us older folk <laughs> have to kind of jump in and, and uh, really, yeah, yeah, sorry, I was referring to me. I was, yes, I was just referring <laughs> to me only. Um, I think it's just getting really used to making it a part of your process and on a consistent basis. And I agree also with Dr. V that there are a lot of things that can be intensive, uh, especially like doing the, the animations or mm -hmm. things like that. So, what you can do, what what you want to do, and I think I'm sure Dr. V does it. I'm sure you probably do too as well, John. Is is having material that you can um, that you can massage for another client, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. so that's, that's the way you do it. Yeah, and so I think so. So then that's the answer for that. That if you have if you're doing for clients, you want to have something you can massage. But at the same time, if you're doing stuff for yourself individually, then it comes down to how can you take content that you have. And then again, chop up into smaller pieces so that you can kind of do something on a, a more steady basis or a more frequent basis. Yeah. I think that's really important because when, when you're out of sight, out of mind, and I literally know some people who are in the family that literally, if you're not top of mind to them, you don't really like hear from them. And so there are people that are, that are really like that, that you, if you're not kind of there, they forget about you and um, get pushed out by somebody else. So just um, frequency, kind of have to get used to that and uh, and use it to your advantage and then repurpose materials as much as you can. Yeah, makes perfect sense. I'm going to hop in for a second and then I'll hit you, Dr. V, but um, chatbots. Yeah, we're going to be talking about chatbots soon. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. That's, that's going to be coming up. We're all chatty. Um, and we're here every day at 5, every day. So Eastern. 5 Eastern. Eastern. Five Eastern. <laughs> Do stop in if you uh, if you get a chance to catch us. Creator Studio. You know, every time I see Creator Studio, I think YouTube, but Instagram, right? Is, is the well, way. Creator Studio is in Facebook, and you can reach Instagram Facebook. through Facebook Creator Studio. Creator Studio, and I haven't played around with that much because I, I, I just started everything. finding new things in it today, and I was just. Yeah. But what's it's so funny is. My, my wife does tons of social media posting and, and those snippet videos and you know, tasty videos and other things. And I find something, I get all excited. Look what I got. And she already knows it. It's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, really it's it. I mean, I bumped into it, but I really haven't used it. I've used a lot of other tools for so long that I really, yeah. it's all new to me, but um, I'm sure we'll be talking about that too. I'll yeah. make a note as we dig in as that we, more. As we experiment with Creator Studio, what you can and cannot do. And I'm grateful you caught us too, Victoria. It was great to uh, see you again, sort of. Kind of, you've seen me, but. We can see her. Well, we see, see her. her. She's just up. kind of, she's, yeah. just, she's exactly. just holding up pose. Strike a pose. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And go ahead, Dr. V. You're up. Oh, what? This? <laughs> I'm not going to do any more of that. <laughs> yeah. I think when it comes to social posting, it's particularly important that your content be branded. 
because that stuff is going to get shared on various platforms. And as a result, you want it, people to find you and circle back to you as the originator of the content. And even if you hire someone like John or me or Troy to create social posting for you, you want to make sure that it's branded to your particular business or practice or whatever it is. And you need to make sure that your social posts are creative enough to cut through the noise that exists in social media platforms now so that you actually have something that is good enough and informative enough to share. When we do social posting, I know that we are pretty much sure that they're not just rah-rah, feel-good images, but that they're educational and that they teach something about your particular business or the field that your business is in. And with that edutainment or infotainment component to your social posts, there's a greater chance that they're going to go viral much greater chance that they're going to go viral. Yeah. So I, let's see. Are we, are we at the end now? We are, at the, we are at the end. It's time for my final thought. I've run out of water. So. You know, um, my final thought again is, you know, keep, keep whatever you're doing simple and um, try to structure it. So that's easy, whatever you're doing to keep up with. And um, ideas really make things look lived in. And I think being the live video guy that I am adding live video content is a great way to keep things fresh and, uh, maybe allow you to post even more than one time a day or using um, kind of a set gr content grouping. Like a lot of times we'll rotate posts every, the same posts over and over every quarter. Or maybe every 90 days, quarterly. Yeah, typically. yeah quarterly typically we'll rotate. So you'd be surprised how many people, how many people who follow your page don't even recognize that or they'll say, Nobody hey, that's really know. good. But it's the third yeah. time you've posted it. In, yep. the, in that year and they finally see it. Yeah, they'll so. just never even notice. So that's how we're able to do it very consistently with posting tools. Um, and a schedule, I always have a content mm -hmm. schedule. But on that note, thanks for joining us everybody and uh, come back and join us again. In, in, in 23 hours. 23 hours, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like looking at my clock. What? <laughs> oh yeah, we'll see you in twenty three hours. Bye it's now. Three mount, three mountain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great seeing everybody. See you guys. Oh, bye bye.